afternoon guys uh, it's lunch time for me right now and I'm just getting out getting warmed up uh, for the week's activities so I thought I'd shoot you a quick uh, video tell you what's coming up both on the channel our woodworking and what I'm working on as both as a woodworker and different projects plus I'll share the favorite part of every project I have we'll apply a little finish to this one I think I'm kind of, I'm really think this is going to come up kind of cool uh, this is one of those pieces of wood. I was clearing out a bunch of black walnut that had gone bad on me. Even though I painted the sides on it, I didn't get to it in time enough and it cracked pretty badly to the point where I thought it wasn't safe to put on the lathe. So I was trashing it and I had one piece and it was the ugliest piece in the entire bunch. But it's a lesson to me that if it's something safe to turn, go ahead and throw it on the lathe and just see what happens. Uh, I mean, I had painted the blacks of the end, so I couldn't really tell what was going on with the grain. But when I started turning it, this thing was oblong. It was huge on one side and really thin on the other, so it was very unbalanced. It looked like it might have been a crotch, but one branch had died a long time ago. And it was just the top cutoff of a... It was a piece of trash wood in my mind. But once I got into it, I've got some nice feathering going on. I had some bark inclusions. I made nice little hollows. Uh, some bar uh, tree branch that, that had actually been wrapped around the bark. Uh, there's a bark on the inside of the tree, which turned out kind of cool. I got some weird sap wood right in the middle of the tree. So I think it's going to turn out pretty good. But this was kind of, I was about to toss and go, hey, I need a warm up. Let's throw it on the legs and see what happens. Uh, and I'm also working on some ne new techniques. Now, I did go ahead and sand this one. Uh, normally, for utilitarian bow bowls, I do my best not to sand, to do it with a cutting edge. It's just good practice. And I think I sanded it because I want to show you something. Something that I'm working on hard myself is I have a tendency to bruise the wood. Meaning that everyone tells you to ride the bevel. But there is a problem with riding the bevel in that if you're getting into the cut, that bevel is actually pushing down on the fibers and it's somewhat crushing them if you get slightly too aggressive. And that's a problem I've been having for the past three or four years. Some accommodations I've done on that is on my uh, bowl gouge, I actually, whenever I grind the bevel, I grind and round off the back side of it. And I'll show you a quick picture of that. And hopefully that's preventing me from really leveraging that cutting edge. Because whenever I'm using the bowl gouge, I'm really not pressing very hard. I'm finding this balance point where the cutting edge is kind of pushing the blade into the, the gouge into the wood, where the bevel is pushing back. And when you find that balance, sometimes you get a little bit too aggressive and the bevel just kind of pushes itself and it crushes the fibers behind it. And the problem I have is you can't see this. The crushed fibers are invisible. You will sand it dead smooth which I did on this one, and I have a feeling I'm going to have some crushed fibers on this one because while I was turning it, it's a bit punky. So it's a little bit softer than most of the walnut. Uh, you know, the rest of the batch went bad. So, I mean, it was a little bit softer than I expected. So I, th I have a feeling it's going to pop out when I put the oil to it. So I wanted you all to see that. Other things I'm working on this week is I'm doing the finishing touches on my last video of that first lesson, that classroom lesson that you would teach to middle school or high school students. Uh, mainly working on the chisel this first three-part series uh, I'm calling it lesson one it's like the first chapter in a textbook I'm putting the last touches on it and hopefully that will be up Friday so let's put some finish on this and let's see what happens to see if that bruising pops out and I'll show you a few pictures of close-up before I put the finish on uh, also I like to use walnut oil uh, you find in the olive oil section most grocery stores it's natural it, walnut oil is really one of the only natural oils that will fully cure on it, uh, its own without any dryers or anything like that uh, and it works great for food safe finishes if you want to tell people about that one and if you're refinishing up a cutting board or something like that a little walnut oil the bad side is it does fully cure so you will have to reapply it every six months or so if you're not using your bowl for normal cooking work okay here we go let's apply some finish Hee hee hee, my favorite part of a project. After you finished all that stuff, that first coat of oil that gets all your hard work to pop out, whether it's a piece of furniture or a turning like this, it's kind of cool. Here's that interior sapwood that I found out that was kind of cool looking. We have a bark inclusion right there. I had that branch that popped out right there. I got some nice crotch wood right there and a little bit of feathering going on. I think this is going to turn out pretty cool, but we never know until we put the finish on. But Looking at the reflection, you can see as I spent a little bit of time sanding to get it smooth. So let's see what happens when those crushed fibers absorb a little bit more oil than the rest of the wood around it. 
uh, they will probably darken up a little bit. So once again, this is just straight walnut oil from the olive oil aisle. If I can get the stupid childproof cap on, why do they do this? Come on. Okay, I'm gonna go grab another jar. Okay, walnut oil, just pour a little in. And basically what you do is you just let this soak in, wipe it all over. Ooh, look at that, how that's turning out, how that's changing colors. Oh, this is gonna be so nice. Ooh, darkening up. Just put a good heavy coat on, let it soak in for a little bit, then wipe off as much as you possibly can. Uh, just like any oil. And the general rule of thumb is you put a coat of oil once a day for a week, once a week for a month, and once a month for a year, and then just as needed after that. Don't let your rags dry in your trash can. Spread them out to dry out. Uh, they do generate heat. Oh, wow. Look at that. Turning out nice. Okay, now let's start. I'm going to let this sit for a little bit. I'll wipe off the excess. Then we'll look for those compressed fibers that I, I'm working on my skill level to improve so I don't have to worry about them anymore. Okay, it's been about five minutes in my two Monday morning practice pieces. Just a quick piece of Osage Orange. That was a piece of trash because it had a little bit too big a crack. I almost got all the crack out, but this was just practice and what I was, I was working on on taking a compound angle and then getting the curve on the inside to come down and I'm about 16th of the inch on the inside which was a fun little warm-up it's been a few weeks since I've done any bowl turning so you gotta practice before you get, get on it and I am really kind of excited uh, about this wall black walnut one it's got some really cool figure on it and I'm going to uh, move the camera and hopefully explain some stuff but some bruising did pop up and I want to point that out to you uh, and show you what I'm working on, but this is one of those skills things that it just takes practice. It wasn't necessarily an error, it's just a finding that balance point with your bowl gouge so that your, the bevel isn't being pushed down in the wood just a little bit. Uh, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Look at that. We got a little crotch wood action there, and I'm, see if you can see that out, but if you look, in, look right about here, you can see that chatoyance that comes from crotch wood because of all the high stressed area. The, the wood kind of changes colors as the light reflects off of it. You might be able to see it even better on the bottom. See how the wood changes color? That's a really cool effect if you can get figured wood, uh, which is something we wood turners and uh, woodworkers go out for. This would have been an awesome door panel or cabinet panel or drawer front. Uh, in it, but I also want to point out a few things. You can look in here and you don't see too many lines, but on the back, look right here. I'm not, I'll try to zoom in. You see this line that kind of circles around right there? It's too wide to be a scratch mark from cell dust. What that is, that's the bevel of my bowl gouge was pressing the fibers down and slightly crushing them. And thus, those crushed fibers absorbed a little bit more wood, I mean, more oil than the wood around it. So you get these lines that come around. And there's no way to, for me to figure out if they're going to show up while you're sanding because it looks smooth. You only get those lines pop out when they absorb a little bit more oil. And that's a skill that I'm working on, and it's something that you'll work on for the rest of your woodworking career. Even with hand tools, if you do a lot of carving and you're pivoting off that bevel, well, underneath your bevel, you're crushing the wood. There's more stress on that wood, and that will pop out whenever you put finish on it. Now, this probably wouldn't have been an effect if I'd put shellac over the top, thus sealing the wood first. Uh, and which is what I do a lot of times with my darker woods. I just wanted to show you all this effect on this uh, piece of black walnut. Kind of a good example. Never to throw away wood if it's safe to turn or work with. Turned out pretty cool. So that's my Monday afternoon lunch break. I hope you all got a few tips out of it. 
If you like it, maybe I'll do this a little bit more often telling you what we're going to be working on this week. Uh, I'm turning a bunch of bowls this week or roughing out blanks uh, and finishing up on some commitments for some bow saws and coping saws and those should be going out too. And you should expect one of my long form videos, those 45 minute to hour and a half lessons uh, hitting it later in this week. I'm just finishing up a last of the filming and a little bit of editing. Uh, and always remember, it's always worth the effort to learn, create, and share with others. And also, lay out your rags before you throw them away. Let them dry so they don't go boom. Y'all be safe and have fun.